Our brand new cycle of basic Spacelands is now available for purchase at www.itresolvesmtg.com. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. I am very excited. Uh, as you probably saw on the front end of this video, we finally have all of our Spacelands available. Uh, they turned out uh, fantastic. We are very, very excited. There is our own little custom back on them, just so we're not uh, infringing on any copyright issues. But uh, if you are interested in picking those up, they are on our website. They are available right now at resolvesmtg.com. Uh, you can pick those up there. You can get the full cycle or individual lands. Uh, it is while supplies last for now, but of course, we'll we'll plan on doing a reorder at some point if we need to. So uh, very excited about that, so please do go check those out if you are interested. And now, let's jump into the deck. So, uh, today, I kind of thought we'd go with, like, a classic deck. This is one that, um, I I've, I've played before, though it has been quite a while. It's been kind of since Throne days, uh, that I really played it. Uh, and for good reason, because it is a Golgari adventure deck, uh, a lot of those cards came out of that set. So, uh, we do have a lot of really, really powerful stuff. Truly, the only new card is Vivian, uh, which I do think is a very, very good include with this list. Obviously, the majority of our deck is creatures. We do have a couple non-creatures, but this is really a good, good, strong card for this list, in my opinion. So, uh, to kind of go through things, in our one-drop slot, well, uh, we have the Fulmire Knight here, uh, mostly as a way to draw cards and also just kind of clog up the early game. It does kind of require a burn spell or we're going to be trading off with it. Uh, creatures it doesn't really well match up well against. Things like Fervent Champion are a little bit difficult, but we'll figure out a way. Uh, and so this is really just kind of a value card uh, for us. Uh, now, speaking of card draw, Edgewall Innkeeper is the classic card draw card for these adventure decks. Uh, does a fantastic job every time we cast a creature with an adventure, uh, which again, we've got quite a few. Uh, then this essentially is going to be drawing us a card, which is great. Uh, so absolutely love this. We definitely want that to stick around. Uh, Gilded Goose is our ramper. Uh, so not only does this create some food tokens, but it also lets us sacrifice those food tokens for some mana of any color. Uh, and then of course we do just have the opportunity to sacrifice those to gain some life as well. So, uh, against aggro decks, things like that, this will be a very handy card. Uh, looking in the two drop slot, uh, we have a four of Order of Midnight. Uh, this is a two, two flyer that cannot block for two, which is not super exciting, but it is a nice, aggressive, evasive threat. Uh, but not only that, on the uh, adventure side, we can return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand. Now, uh, again, we've got some pretty good creatures that we'd might, we'd, we'd probably like to return. Uh, and so Order of Midnight, actually a really, really solid card. Not to mention, we have the Lucky Clover. So uh, Lucky Clover, a really, really cool card in these adventure decks if you've not played them before. Uh, it essentially just allows you to uh, copy your adventure spells anytime you play them. So say we have this out and we play, you know, Alter Fate uh, to return target creature from our graveyard. We get to double that. We get to do it again. Uh, every Lucky Clover stacks. So essentially we could do this up to five times if we had all five or all four, excuse me, Lucky Clovers out. Uh, it'd be the initial play and then the four copies. So very, very strong uh, synergies there. And again, with the Edgewall Innkeeper playing out these creatures, we get extra value there as well. Uh, Love Struck Beast, a really good all-star in these lists. Uh, it's a great thing to be able to drop out a 1-1 one, one on turn one, and then turn three, be able to drop a 5-5. Five, five. That is hugely, hugely strong. Uh, deals with a lot of creatures, which is nice. Uh, it just matches up well against them. Um, so very, very strong there. Uh, three Murderous Rider. Uh, this is a really strong card, in my opinion. Uh, a little sad to only see three here, uh, but we did pull this list, so, uh, this is one that essentially just destroys a creature or a planeswalker as we need it to. Now, we do lose two life every time that happens, so I think it's probably safe maybe to run the three, but, uh, this just gives us so many outs, especially with Lucky Clovers, uh, out. We can really, really get some value off of this. Not to mention it's just a 2-3 lifelinker. So very, very good. Uh, in the 4-drop slot here, we've got some pretty big all-stars as well. Wicked Wolf as a way to uh, kind of fight through some of the board presence. Uh, and then again, sacrificing the food from the Gilded Goose, a little bit of synergy there, gives it indestructible. Uh, it also puts a 1-1 counter on it, and then we do have to tap it, but that's okay. It can survive quite a lot. 
uh, in tandem with this. And you'll notice there's a lot of these little synergies as we go through. Uh, Questing Beast here, fantastic card, a way to threaten Planeswalkers. It's just a really, really strong, easy threat. Uh, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste uh, can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. So a lot of decks that are, um, excuse me, like mono red lists or something like that, if they don't have like a giant out or an Anax out, it's a little bit difficult for them to deal with this at all. Uh, but very, very strong card. Uh, we kind of already talked about Vivian, but this is going to let us play cards, uh, creature cards from the top of our deck, which is very, very good, again, considering we've got a lot of creature cards in our deck. Uh, very, very strong. Uh, not only that, but anytime we cast a creature spell, if we minus two her, uh, we get to search our library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost and put it onto the battlefield. So, you know, say we're casting a questing beast and we've minus two, we get to go search out pretty much anything. Uh, very, very strong. Really, really like that. Uh, at the top of the curve here, we do have three casualties of war just to give us the extra kind of reach and value that we need. Uh, this is kind of a good catch-all card no matter what. This just gives us a way to deal with pretty much anything on the board, so absolutely love it. Uh, as far as lands go, we've got 11 swamps and 10 forests. Uh, a little bit more on the swamps, but, you know, we've got plenty of mana here. Uh, and then two overgrown tomb, and that is it. We are at 23 lands. Pretty straightforward. I'm excited to try this out. I haven't played this deck in a very long time, so I'm kind of just excited to see how it does in this meta. Um, obviously, things have changed quite a bit, uh, but, you know, we'll see. I think we've got uh, the tools, at least, to uh, to give it a shot. So let's see how we do. Uh, very excited to try this. Hopefully, you guys are having a fantastic week. I do apologize. We did not get a video out yesterday. Um, as it turns out, uh, my fiance and I are laying new floor uh, down in our, well, in our downstairs area. Uh, this is a pretty solid opener. It's not amazing, but we've got some stuff to do. Um, and so yesterday, literally from like 8 to 8, I mean, it was a full day. Um, we, were, we were just laying floor. Uh, that's all. Uh, it was... A lot, a lot of work, but uh, it's looking great, so I'm excited about it. But I did kind of take a day off to make sure we could get that done. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's just play out this here. Um, I'm actually going to play out one of these little death touchers. Uh, it just gives us something, uh, an extra creature on the board, but also something to block with, so they are a little bit less enticed to, to attack in. Um, here they may just sacrifice, in which case I'm glad we did this because we do get uh, the to sac just the 1-1 one, one creature token. <clears throat> and here you're seeing a little bit more synergy with the Lovestruck Beast. We've got this 1-1 one, one out, we get the Lovestruck Beast out, we can keep doing this. So uh, They've got a very cool deck though, I will say that. Um, very excited we have Wicked Wolf to fight this away uh, as we need to. Uh, not going to attack in here. <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, fantastic. So here they get to do this again, uh, in which case they'll take out this knight here, and that's actually okay. Uh, for us, uh, we can either play out this 1-1 one, one Death Toucher and swing in, or just play out the Wicked Wolf, honestly, uh, which I do think is a little bit better. Um, this can still block, it can't attack. Uh, as long as we don't have a 1-1 one, one out, we can't do that, so just a heads up. This is a very cool list, though, by the way. I have not seen this card so much uh, in any list, so very cool. Uh, let's Wicked Wolf. <clears throat> we kind of need to stop them from doing what they're doing, so let's just kill that. Um, we do take a little bit of life here, but we get rid of their big sacrifice outlet, uh, which is pretty good. Um, and then next turn, ooh, not good, not good. Hopefully, we can uh, start swinging in a little bit. We'll see. Sacrifices a creature, huh? Um, let's do this. I don't love that, but let's do that. I think the Wicked Wolf is a little too crucial for us, uh, to be honest. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's throw out the Gilded Goose. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to draw a card here. 
Ugh, so many lands. Um, and then let's do this, and we'll just play this out. Uh, we can attack in here, but we really can't risk losing too much life, so I'm just going to kind of sit back, see what the opponent decides to do. We're going to be taking some hits here. Um, and really what we would like at this point is like a casualties of war. Uh, we can hit this, one of these guys, and then hit one of their red and black sources here. Take them down to one red source, get rid of some of this, uh, you know, very, very strong ability. Oh, not good. Um, and we'll, you know, hopefully be able to outvalue them, but that's kind of the idea. Unfortunately, we didn't really have the powerful, you know, lucky clover draw that we were kind of hoping for. Um, good news here is we do get to gain some life off of these uh, gilded gooses. Gilded geese? That. Um, let's throw this out here. And again, we're just going to sit back. Um, we're kind of leaving it up to them to see what they want to do. <clears throat> um, we've got the life gain, at least a little bit of life gain here. Uh, so let's do that. Let's just make sure we're mitigating some of the life loss. And we'll see what we can do. These gilded geese... I said it correctly, uh, really do come into play pretty well here, which I love. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, guys, if I'm honest, I am dead tired today. Uh, we laid floor literally for 12 hours yesterday, which in itself is not like the hardest job in the world. It just takes forever. It takes so long. That's fine. Uh, that sucks, but it's not really the worst thing in the world. We're going to go ahead and create another food. Uh, and I think what we're going to do is actually utilize one of these here. Put a counter on here. That way this is going to eat one of these guys if, uh, if they decide to attack in. Oh, there we go. That's what we wanted. That's all we wanted. Uh, let's casualties of war here. Target land, target enchantment, target creature. Do not want to hit an artifact. Okay. Let's get a Woe Strider, let's get one of these guys, and let's get this. And this is the power of Casualties of War, uh, where we really, really get to, to go ham. Now, they do get to sacrifice that creature there, which, you know, sucks, but it's not the end of the world. Whoops. Alright. This is mitigating a lot of damage for us, which is great. Um... Getting rid of a, a mana source here, not the biggest deal in the world, but that's okay. Sorry if you hear a, dark, a dog barking. Alright. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. They're really going ham on the sacrificing. They're trying to get as much damage in as possible, I suppose, so that makes sense. They can also just replay a Woe Strider here, so we do have to keep that in mind. Um, can I just do this? I can't, right? No, I didn't think so. Uh, no attacks, I don't think. Um, as much as I would love to, if they got rid of this, we'd have to block with this. Um, we, we don't want to put ourselves in that position. So, sure. Honestly, another casualty of war would be pretty great. And this just ensures that we can block this at some point. Yep. Alright. We gotta hope we stabilize here. Oh, another casualty. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to do it, right? Um, target land, target enchantment, target creature. You. And you. They'll sacrifice here. So we are going to take one and they're going to get a scribe, but uh, we're now getting rid of their one big way of dealing a lot of damage to us uh, repeatedly. Now, we are down to just a couple of life, so we do have to be slightly careful, um, but that's okay. 
We can be careful. That's fine. It's a cool deck, though, by the way. Uh, I mean, it's pretty straightforward sacrifice deck, but it's not a Luris sacrifice deck, which I think is interesting. And now this is fine. Like, they, they're not dealing damage on sacrificing, which is really, really important. Those Bastions, oh, so good. So, so good. All right. Let's get you out. Um... We're going to pass for one more turn here, mostly because we need to, you know, keep our life total up. Um, this also is a nice little block for us if we need to. So I'd like to make sure that we can do that. Uh, oops. Cancel. I'm just going to sacrifice the Death Touch right here. We can gain this life and we need to keep the Gilded Goose around. So I think that that's pretty crucial. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, and let's do this. I'm just gonna do, like, gain as much life as possible at this point. All right. Oh, another Wicked Wolf. That's quite good. Um, if that's the case, we do need to do this. So now we're feeling much, much better about our position. Um, do we start attacking? No, probably not yet. I know I'm being a little bit slow, uh, but I do think we have to be pretty meticulous with this one. We can't just swing in like crazy. Um, we are at eight life. Eight life is pretty low. Okay, now we can kind of start swinging in here though. Get eight down. And we'll do this. We'll just pass here. This is where we're in the position, though, that we can mitigate any of the damage that they will do, um, which is super nice. That's very good, though. I will say that. Um, that makes it, that changes the math pretty significantly. Um, so we do have to be a bit careful here. But we can block. Uh, one of these guys with the Gilded Goose Oops. and then activate the ability. There we go. So essentially they got in for one damage. Now this is a cool interaction though I will say they get a lot of scries thanks to this, which is very, very cool. It's only game one and we're 18 minutes in. I know I'm playing a little bit slow, but... Ugh, so many lands. So many lands. Okay. Let's both attack... Whoops. In at Chandra, just to get rid of this. Um, they can block with one of their guys, but obviously that doesn't matter. Time to sleep for a Unfortunately, we're just drawing a bunch of land now. We really just need a spell, and then we can start really doing some work. Really, really doing some work. Very excited, guys, uh, about these new lands. Um, oh, seriously? Uh, I hope you guys are too. I know a lot of people were saying they were interested in picking up, you know, the full cycle or something like that that's why they were holding off uh so they are all available now if you're interested now is the time uh let's just whoops let's block here uh and we'll go ahead and create a food here make sure we're gaining enough here to stay out of burn range in particular um 
that is a worry that you know they they clearly show they have shocks and things like that so we just have to be kind of careful surprised they didn't well i guess they didn't have to that's a great draw for us um let's attack both here we're gonna kill the Chandra with the Murderous Rider, I believe. I think that's the best play. Uh, we do lose a couple life here, but we're gonna get a 2-3 lifelinker out of the deal, which is very, very worth it. Not to mention we will still have Gilded Goose up. All right. And this is exactly the point that we wanted to get to. Unfortunately, we just drew lands for so many turns we weren't really getting there. But now, not only do we have the Gilded Goose gaining us some life back, but we've got this left up uh, that we're happy to block with if we'd like to. They get another one of these guys. That's fine. Um, if this is all they're doing, I don't really care. Like, we can, we can solve that problem, if that makes sense. Um, and that's really not going to do much either. So, uh, let's do this. Let's gain our life back. Um, Edgewall and Keeper, huh? Um, not amazing, really, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to attack with both of these. We'll see what they want to do. Kind of hoping they would just do something like this, because that just means we don't have to utilize this to to put a counter here. I can chump block this. I don't really care. At some point we do have to finish the game, so I am kind of moving a little bit quicker. All right, let's edge wall. We really don't even have to chump block necessarily. We just get to... Oh, that's cool. This is very cool. That might win them the game. I don't know. Depends how they play. Uh, no, we don't want to do that yet. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Interesting include in a list like this. Very cool. Three shocks. What? Well, they don't have any more, right? Okay. I see now these these sacrifices in tandem with this. This is very, very cool. Oh, we just lose off of this, right? No, no, no. I'm sorry. We get to do this in response. I guess we lose to an attack, though, do we not? Or no, do we gain, we gain two back? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. Okay. They should have just killed one of these guys. Then they definitely win. Like, if they kill this, they just win. I'm keeping myself alive by sacrificing this, but the reality is we probably just lost. <laughs> um, in that case, let's block like this. The chances are we've lost now. This was a cool game though. I will say this was pretty awesome. Yeah, a lot of back and forth. A lot, a lot of back and forth. Okay. Um, does this get us there? No. Nope. All right. We'll go ahead and concede. That was a heck of a first game, man. We are 24 minutes in. My goodness. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into game two uh, with this Golgari Adventures deck. Unfortunately, that was just a bit of a slow roll for us. We hit so many lands uh, in the um, kind of mid part of the game where we were kind of at a stall. 
but it really didn't get us anywhere. Now, I'm hoping that's kind of an anomaly. We do have 23 lands in this deck, so I didn't expect that to happen quite so many times, but that's okay. Uh, this, we have a Lucky Clover, so I do think we keep it, um, and we do have a couple lands here. We definitely need one more, um, preferably... Well, really any land would be helpful. Um, I prefer probably a black land so we can start... Oh, well, there you go. Um, so we can kind of play that out. Um, I'm going to toss this out here. Um, let's be mana efficient. Let's do a nice one, two, three here. Uh, this obviously, like we said, doesn't line up well here. Um, but for anything else, like a robber, uh, or excuse me, this is a knight's deck. Any other haste knighter. Uh, would be a really nice block. So let's play this and let's get Lucky Clover down. Um, no attacks. This just means that they kind of have to second guess attacking in or they have to burn spell it, uh, which just means they're not being quite as mana efficient as they could be. So very good for us. Okay. Not going to block. All right. Gonna kill this. And we get to copy this. I'm actually gonna kill... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna kill this. Uh, those are the biggest problematic cards. Now, we're losing a bunch of life in this process, which is not good. But, um, I think that's the right play. And then next turn, we can Love Struck Beast plus, you know... Order of Midnight or, or something like that. Um, Order of Midnight does not block, so we do have to keep that in mind. No, we won't block that. Ooh, was really hoping for something else there, but we will go ahead and do this. Let's get our food token out. Um, and we'll just play this guy out. He can't block, uh, but let's be mana efficient and go ahead and play him. Here we can block the Gilded Goose and then block here if they attack in. Uh, and don't, you know, do anything, obviously. Do anything else. Um, this does, assuming Gilded Goose sticks around, though, we do get our fourth land. So we can now, like, Wicked Wolf, for instance, one of these guys, and then really start to do some damage. Okay, that changes the math pretty significantly. That also changes the math significantly. Okay, so... They're just attacking in with those two, huh? That is six damage. We're going to try and take six. That's a bit rough, but casualties of war. Very funny. Um, let's Wicked Wolf. Kind of auto pay here. I think we got to have it fight this guy. Uh, as much as I don't like them drawing a card, I do think we kind of have to do that. And then we do get to attack in here. All right, now we just have to hope they don't have enough hasters to really kill us um, <laughs> or enough bump spells. Uh, if they've got another inspired veteran, that's a problem. Inspiring veteran, that is a problem. But we'll do the best we can. Wow, that is very, very good. So now we just lose, right? Yeah. All right, fair enough. We just lost. Um, Dang. Dang. We were like a turn away from really, really getting there. That's okay. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and jump into our final game, guys. Uh, so far, not doing super well with Golgari Adventures, but that's not to say it's a bad deck. I think um, I think it's okay. Um, I know the first game, I think, had we just drawn more stuff, we would have been okay. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get there. Luris of the Dream Den. Um... We'll try it. I don't feel great about it, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna do that. Most likely the cycling deck, um, which I'm actually happy that we have the murderous rider with Lucky Clover here, um, as well as the Fulmire Knight. To be honest, that's pretty good. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and play Lucky Clover here. Uh, next turn, depending on what they play, if they've got like a fox or something, we definitely will want to murder a strider, killing the stinger and the knight, or in the fox, excuse me. Um, but we'll see what they end up actually having. 
They may not have that. Um, but if they do play out a second threat, that's 100% what we're going to be doing. Uh, which looks like that is not the case. Alright, so the question is, do we just draw two or do we just murder a knight? Um, hmm. I'm going to go for some max value here. I know we're losing life in this process, so I don't love this, but we're going to try it. Uh, yep. Pretty good for us. Not amazing, but not bad. That is kind of our engine card. Ooh, and another lucky Glover. I do like that. Um, all right. Yep. We're being a little greedy here. Um, just to make sure that we've got, you know, everything that we need to kind of take them out if we can do it. Um, I'm also looking for some max value, so I'm hoping that they play out just another card here. Um, if they don't, we're like 100% killing this. <laughs> Perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for. That gives us our two for one, so now we can murder a Rider here. Um, let's do that. Now we're losing a lot of life in this process, so we do have to be very, very careful. Sorry for the frame rates, guys. It's very dependent on who we're against, unfortunately. Um, and so this is just one of those matches, but we'll push through. It will not be a very long match, unlike the last ones. Um, <clears throat> so we're taking four damage from our own card here, which is not good, but we're trying it anyway. Um, then here we get to play out the Fulmire Knight. So at least now we've got a Death Touch blocker. Ugh, such a long, long game, that first game. Luris of the Dream Den, sure. Okay. Uh, let's play this. Hmm. I have to be very careful how we play our mana. So let's do the innkeeper. Let's do this. Okay. So the problem is they can play the stinger next turn and potentially just cycle away and kill us, which we cannot let happen. Um, so if we play this now, we're kind of in a bad position because we can't sacrifice the food. So I'm going to pass here. I think is the correct thing to do. Sorry again for the frame rates here, guys. I do apologize. Almost through. Almost through. And this is what I was talking about. So... We can't just, you know, we can't just let them cycle away a bunch of stuff and kill us. So we have to leave up that three, or that two mana, excuse me, to sacrifice for the food. Uh, which I think we'll go ahead and do. Wish we could have been a little bit more mana efficient, but that's okay. Um, and this does only buy us a turn, which is very worth noting. We do have to be very, very careful. Yeah. All right. All right. Are they going to attack in? No. Good. That's helpful. Um. <laughs> Let's play this out. It's our life linker. Um which is really, really helpful. Let's drop that down. Uh, and now again, we've got two mana left open for the Gilded Goose. Uh, not gonna attack again. Gotta be very careful. Um, that Stinger is what makes this difficult. Um, being aggressive right now is definitely not the right play, in my opinion. Because uh, we could have just played like Questing Beast and attacked in, but I don't think that that's correct at all. So the question is, do they just have enough to kill us? If they've just got like a Zenith Flare, then we just lose. 
Um, we can't do, or just enough cyclers, we just lose. Let's go ahead and do this now. It's not going to matter too much. Um, unfortunately, we can't do everything. Uh, we can't sacrifice this this turn. So if they've got three more cyclers, we do just lose. If you hear um, some construction going on in the background, by the way, uh, I do apologize. Um, we are still finishing the floor, and we do have some help uh, known as my family, uh, which is really, really nice of them. Uh, and so they are uh, downstairs helping out right now. Oh, they just give this trample. Okay. Well, we lost every single game. Uh, that feels kind of bad, considering how good this deck used to be. Um, but that's okay. We're, we're here to learn. We're here to experience how this deck does in this meta. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please make sure, as always, to check out our website. We've got all the new stuff going on right now. Really excited about these new lands. Really happy to have those out for you guys. So if you're interested in picking them up, you can certainly do so. Uh, do hope uh, you'll like and comment down below if you enjoyed the video. Uh, and I will see you very soon with part two of Golgari Adventures. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of better luck uh, in that video. Unfortunately, we didn't have the best this time, but that's okay. I'll see you guys then.